What's up, buddy? Are you a rat? Whee! Where are you trying to escape to? Surprises are always nice. Like having a little ratto in your videos. Meet Shiro. He's adorable. He knows it. Yes, he does. You know what else is nice? When a blaster comes out that had absolutely no marketing or advertisements behind it whatsoever that just kind of shows up in your P.O. box with a bunch of other blasters you've never heard of it before and you take one look at it and think, wow, this thing was made for me. Primetime Toys, I don't know why you haven't talked more about this blaster because the Adventure Force Sportsman looks absolutely incredible. It looks weird, but trust me, it looks incredible. This blaster is a pump action hopper fed dart blaster. Now, obviously Adventure Force has done other hopper fed blasters, but they've all been flywheelers. The Sportsman here, well, it's a mechanical prime, and I have a weird feeling that's going to work a heck of a lot better than something like the Destructor or the Command Fire. Those blasters weren't bad by any stretch of the imagination, but if you were holding them straight, they had a tendency to stop firing because they needed to have the hopper agitated. This thing's always moving, and it's a shotgun. It looks really weird. I'm revising my estimates of what could possibly be the best blaster of 2020. You want some dirt? You want some dirt? No? No? So let us dive right into the Adventure Force Sportsman. There we go. Three in a row. Those are all perfect. Let's give it a slight angle. Oh, there we go. Super fast speed loading, 20 dart hopper pump action blaster, blasts up to 80 feet. It's got a trigger, it's got a pump action, it's got a side door that opens the top up the hopper, and it works just like all the other dart zone kind of blasters. Interesting enough, it shows the original super dart up here, but on the actual blaster, it has the Adventure Force waffles we've known and loved. And this looks awesome. It's got a big old carry handle right here that is extremely comfortable, which, and its small size kind of makes me think this would be an awesome secondary blaster. There's tons of space right here and options for you to carry it. So, and it's also got a grip guard. I, it, it, I, I would be really confused if somebody told me this blaster was not made for me. It might as well just say the Walcom blaster on the front of it. This is... It's a pump action shotgun hopper, non-magazine, it's everything. Like this, this should tick all of the boxes. Like the only thing that's possibly missing right now is slam fire. It's not even that thick. All right, enough talk. Let's get it out of the box. Rabbit tank, best match. Are you ready? I'm not. Always love it and the darts are really easy to remove. I, I don't know why this is. Some companies get it, others don't. So you get some instructions, 20 darts, and a sportsman. That's a good grip. That is a really, really comfortable grip. Sorry, I, I gotta get this out of the way. It's nice and fat down here, but slim up here and kind of contours towards the trigger a little bit. There's a finger troil right here that fits me perfectly and plenty of space in there for my hand. I do have somewhat small hands. If your hands are slightly bigger, you may have a problem, but it feels great to me. That is pump grip. It's actually, it's trying. It's got a thing up here to stop your hand from sliding forward and it angles back. So really, they honestly could have done worse on that one. It's a little bit small, but it's still somewhat fat, so it's easy to get into my hands. It's got lots of gears. It's got a lot of gears. That's one of the, like, it's either the most disgusting prime I've ever tried or it's also, like, the best, because it's... Yeah, that's, uh... That's a, that's a lot of, that's a lot of stuff right there. Hopper opens up via a little notch right there and it folds out over to the left hand side. You've also got a door right here to kind of single load or top up the hopper on the fly without opening up the entire blaster and rendering it inoperable. You can kind of see here if the lighting will allow when we prime it back, there's a bolt that goes back and it's actually a pusher breach. Wow. 
That being said, it doesn't really have that much of a barrel, but with that kind of breach on it, this thing's gonna be moddable beyond, oh, oh my goodness. And the ratcheting effect that we're hearing is actually the agitator in the hopper. You would think it wouldn't even need something like that, but every single one of those little clicks from the ratcheting mechanism is vibrating those agitators, which means it should feed pretty freaking flawlessly. In fact, I would argue it will probably feed better than any of the other hopper options we've had from Dart Zone in the past. 20 darts in my hand. Let's, come on, don't be hard. There we go. Load that right up. Fits in flawlessly. Got one dart that went backwards. Close up the hopper. That's 20 darts loaded just like that. Prime it. Ooh, ooh. Uh-oh. Oh, there we go. I don't know what the issue was right there, but removing the darts kind of helped. Hopefully that's not too big of an issue. So now there's 19 in the hopper, one in the chamber. Fire's pretty good. Prime it back, push it forward. And first time we got no darts coming out of it. Let's aggravate the hopper a little bit. There we go. Is it empty? And it's empty. So I actually never had a single problem after that. That was 20 darts. And to refill it, you just dump more darts back into it. Pull the carry handle right here. Flip that up. Pull that off to the side and dump 20 more darts back into it. And then we'll close that up. It's a little tricky. It can do the 20 darts, but like the destructor and whatnot, it really does feel like it wants a little bit less than that. Let's see if it will load the first dart again, because I have a feeling it won't. Yeah, that's kind of what I figured. Let's see. Oh, there we go. Oh, there's one. Okay, let's grab the chronograph and see what she's hitting. 59. 67. 72. 70. 77. 76. 75. 64. 77? 77? Ooh! Had a pretty major malfunction there. The dart didn't fully load. Got pinched in there. I'll test more about the reliability and stuff when we do the outside segment. 76? 70? 72? 74? It's hitting a little bit softer, but it's funny how we have to say that because we're used to nerf stuff hitting like 65 to 70 if we're lucky. So this thing hits some outliers pretty low, but after a while it kind of sat around the 75 mark. So we're going to pretty much call it a 75 FPS blaster for the most part. Feels really good. And honestly, I don't see why, what would stop this thing from being able to be modded. Like the gearing inside of it seems to only be for the whole agitator mechanism inside this thing and the breach and stuff works really good. I'm a little worried about how that last jam happened. I'm guessing I had it kind of like this and primed it and the dart fell halfway out and then kind of stuck in there, but I don't see any issues with it. And that breach system makes me really, really hopeful that I'll be able to shove like an entirely long barrel in here and get more out of that plunger tube. But this is pretty promising, especially for a blaster this small. I know I keep saying it's small and honestly it, it looks pretty huge. Here it is compared to like a Strife ignore the black barrel bit, but you can kind of see it's roughly, I'd say two thirds. The Strife is about two thirds the size of the Sportsman. So it is a bigger blaster, but it kind of has to be to be pump action and comfortable. It's pretty much the perfect size though. And it almost looks like it wants to have a stock point right here. I'm kind of perplexed why that wasn't added on, seeing as how a lot of the new Dart Zone Adventure Force primetime toy blasters have stocks on them. I want to see how well I can function it outside though. And I also want to try to jostle around and see if I can't have more problems with the loading mechanism. Because if it works most of the time and I can't get another jam or two out of it, if I can run through basically 19 darts straight without having a single problem, this thing will be an awesome, like even if you want to run it as like a sidearm kind of thing, it's big, but you could find a holster or a sling for it. And because it's a hopper and because it's pump action, 
it could kind of really change the way people approach things like HVZ and stuff like that. That's just an awesome idea, and it sounds really nice, although I, I'm, it does sound disgusting. All right. Adventure Force Sportsman here. I've loaded one dart in the chamber and then I put 20 darts on top of that. I'm hoping that will kind of help our first shot be a little bit more reliable. So here's the initial shot. There's a bit of a breeze today. Well, we'll see what happens with the Adventure Force waffles. Perfectly straight. Uh, not super impressive. That was, I believe, a flat shot. There we go. Three in a row. Those are all perfect. Let's give it a slight angle. Oh, there we go. Ooh, is that empty? Nope, we had another one of them. I might have short stroked it or something. I wonder if that's what my problem is. That could be a game ender, but still fire the dart. It fired that one farther than any other one. So that was still 20 darts pretty much perfectly, I believe. It might have been 19. I don't know how well I counted it, but wow, what an absolute surprise of a blaster. This thing will be incredible as like a sidearm secondary kind of thing because there's plenty of ways that you could holster or sheath this on you or sling it on you. And the fact that it uses a hopper means you don't have to have dedicated magazines for it. You can fill it up very quickly compared to a magazine, although a full reload will take you longer than doing anything with a magazine, but at least you could top this one up on the fly so you don't have to worry about topping up a magazine or anything like that. And it's incredibly comfortable and works pretty well. I'm gonna reload it and I'm going to jostle around while I'm firing. I'm gonna see if that impacts the performance at all. All right, let's be a little bit more rough with the prime this time. Ooh, that, ooh, yeah, that one didn't feel good at all. What happened there? Pinch, it did, and it fed it backwards that time. Well, that's not great. All right. empty or nope it just failed to feed so if you do pump it back kind of like this it really really does not like that we can probably see what's going on it did feed the dart that time but i'd be a little worried about trying to pull it back like this so if you keep it straight well i think that one just did exactly what i was talking about yep we got another folder huh Well, we'll talk about that, I guess. What are you doing, little tiger? Meow. Huh? What you doing? You enjoying the great outdoors? What a good cat. It will shotgun. You can double time it. There's no loss whatsoever. It just, yeah, doesn't have a long enough barrel. So that's going to be something we have to explore with this blaster. It will shotgun. You can double time it. There's no loss whatsoever. It just, yeah, doesn't have a long enough barrel. So that's going to be something we have to explore with this blaster. Conclusions! Well, the Adventure Force Sportsman is an interesting little blaster, and I really like it. But I am going to be somewhat hesitant of giving this the highest recommendation I possibly can, just because of with the hopper feeding system, especially with this thing being a mechanical prime, you have a tendency to shred darts. Now, it's not anywhere near as bad as a Nerf Centurion or anything like that, but it does have a tendency, especially with more worn darts, 
to get that head kind of pinched in the breech while it's trying to push it forward. I'm not quite sure what's causing that, if it's just my method of priming it, whether it's like this or like this or flat. There may even be a way for you to prime this thing without having that happen. That's a tech that we'll have to explore in the future, but it does have a tendency to jam. And if you don't have exactly like 1920 darts and they're flat when you close this thing it will bind up every dart and prevent you from actually being able to fire it which means while i don't really recommend something like this as a primary blaster although it certainly can do it as long as you're using some kind of team game where if you do have a jam you have a chance to clear it it's an amazing idea for a secondary and or even a sidearm. It's not very big, all things considered. You can make a holster, you can make a clamp, you can have it slung on your body, it doesn't really matter. It's a really nice handy blaster, especially when you account for the fact that it has a hopper and it's a springer. And potentially a blaster like this could fire almost indefinitely. As long as you had no jams, you had this in your squad, just like with something like the Destructor or the Command Fire, this kind of blaster will keep on going, and since it's pump action, you can be a lot more deliberate with your shots, and it's a heck of a lot smaller than either of those blasters. And all things considered, the hopper fed really good. I was impressed how many times I was able to get almost all 20 shots off in a row with no issues whatsoever. I just realized I don't have any idea how much this thing costs. $20! Which, in my opinion, I was expecting it to be $25, so... For $20, heck yeah! But it's comfortable, it's got a gimmick that works, it performs just as well as I would expect it to with some pretty good accuracy and pretty good ranges. It's definitely got some mod potential because this is one of the first time I've seen a blaster like this with a pusher style breach that I think would work really well. Yeah, I'm sold. I think you could pick this up and find a place for it in your foam arsenal. This is definitely a really cool gimmick blaster just like the corner fire that I can give a recommendation to, but it's not gonna be for everybody. And the odds of me trying to mod this thing are literally 1000%. It might not be right now, it might not be this week because I'm a little bit busy with all the other stuff I have to review. Get subscribed if you want to see all that because there's still so much more we have to talk about. But I really want to see how much power you can get out of something like this because I have a feeling it could be a 130 FPS monster and still work rather well with that breach. And maybe even the breach could be designed a little bit, have some kind of helping feeding ramp or something that prevent that kind of pinching problem we've been having. This is what I would hope from like a toy line like every year refresh. I don't care if you have reshells of old blasters, but I want to see something gimmicky, new, and innovative. It doesn't have to be incredibly top tier, but just making something that's good, that does something different that we didn't really have. Sure, we had hoppers, but a hopper fed Springer, not really a thing. And it's in the perfect size, in my opinion. So well done, Primetime Toys. I am impressed. I absolutely love this thing. And I'm going to see what all I can do with it. But most importantly, you're going to have to let me and hopefully Primetime Toys know exactly how you feel about the sportsman. Did I get it right or did I get it wrong? Let me know down in that comment section below. And hey, if you're interested in supporting the channel, I have a Patreon where you can get all sorts of cool perks, like getting your name vinyl cut onto my workbench that has been in like no videos. You will see some videos soon. I have mods in progress right now that it's just because I'm so backed up on stuff like this, I can't get to at the moment, but you'll be seeing them like next week or the week after once all the reviews get out of the way and we can start getting into what we really love. And if you have subscribed and you're new to the channel, welcome. I've gotten a lot of people over the last couple of weeks and I can't thank you guys enough for that. And don't worry, we have the 100K special currently in editing and we have a little bit more filming to do, but that will be coming soon as well. I put a teaser up on the community page so you can see exactly what kind of vibe we're going for with this video. And I think that gets all the other stuff out of the way. I'm Walcom S7. Thank you very so much for watching this video. And of course, I hope to see you in an entirely different one. And I hope everything is as surprising as a blaster that comes out of nowhere, fills a gimmick that I really love. It's just made for me, man. I, I'm so happy. You gotta up, up, sign